were designed in three different studios. One was designed in California, that's this one here. Meant to represent a techno geek type personality or virtual reality type personality. The red one was designed in our European studio near Frankfurt, and that's more the fashionista, you know, meant to represent the design, freedom, and the personalization. And the blue one was designed in our Australian studio in Melbourne, and that's more rep to represent the idea that anybody can drive these vehicles because they're autonomous. So anybody can have mobility in the future. Old people, disabled people, maybe even very young people could go to school in them. <laughs> so the idea is to create three different personalities. So in my view, autonomous vehicles doesn't mean a drab future where you're no longer driving the vehicle and, and it's boring, like it's boring. It's really about showing an exciting vision of the future. I've seen a lot of visions of the future where I see everybody driving the same pod-like vehicle and that doesn't inspire me and it probably doesn't inspire anybody else. It may be a rational solution but it's not an emotionally attractive solution. So with the Envies we really wanted to show not only a solution that works from a rational perspective in terms of addressing urban issues of energy, environment, safety, congestion, parking, but also emotional. People have to feel excited. Hey, I want this future. I'm looking forward to this future. This is cool. So we, we, we had a little bit of fun with the design of these vehicles to expre express the, the possibilities are endless. When you have vehicles that don't have to meet all the crash requirements or all the fuel economy requirements that dictate the design of vehicles today in terms of the shape and the structure, you have tremendous design bandwidths. And so you're really liberating design. And in terms of the interior experience, there's so much more you can do now. We've given people a choice with these vehicles. You can drive the vehicle or you can let it drive you. And it's fun either way. It's a very fun vehicle to drive because it can turn on a dime and it zips forward and backwards. It's really agile. It's great for urban driving. But isn't the, exactly the point of having to get rid of the regulation, having to have a whole new concept of how traffic actually works, the problem that, for example, Segway itself had, because it doesn't fit on the sidewalk, it doesn't fit in the street either. That's a very good point. Yes, these vehicles probably do need a dedicated infrastructure for them. And, uh, new roads, basically. Well, one possibility is there are a lot of new new cities being created, especially in places like China, where we see a lot of interest in electric vehicles and lightweight vehicles. But the other is the, what about a city like uh, London or um, maybe even Manhattan that wants to go car-free? You know, Mayor Bloomberg is really quite interested in uh, the environment and congestion is a big problem. What if you had a, a city center that was car-free but people still need personal mobility? You can't just expect people to walk or cycle and get wet and not be able to carry anything or be forced to take the train or the bus and be tied to a schedule. So a diamond lane for parts, basically. Or maybe even a, a, a congestion charging zone that's now a car-free zone where these vehicles are shared vehicles that are parked outside train stations or bus stations and you pick them up and you just use them for last mile driving. Look at a city, pick a city like Los Angeles, 20 million people maybe. Let's say they have 10 million cars and each car requires about 30 square meters of, of real estate because you have one parking space at home and maybe one at work or one at the supermarket, that's 300 million square meters of parking space. That's over 100 square miles of real estate given up for parking cars. And in places like Shanghai or Beijing, in the future, that's not sustainable. Whether these vehicles are clean or not, it's just not sustainable from a real estate perspective.